I was at a stoplight waiting for the for the walk signal, and this big old black SUV drives up, and there's this gorgeous blonde driver in like black evening wear, and then an attractive young female friend of hers eating frozen yogurt and i'm like looking and then they look at me so what what's the right thing to do here should i like quickly like turn away or should i smile should i hold their gaze like you know the the male gaze it's a it's a problematic thing these days so what what would you do in that situation so i think i i smiled nodded and then I turned, turned and uh, looked, looked for my walk signal because I learned in one of my 12 step programs, all right, that, uh, you know, staring at attractive young women doesn't do you any good. You, you don't want to be a starer, right? Staring, staring can make people uncomfortable. And I'm not here to make people uncomfortable. Like I am going on ahead. This show is one big virtue signal, right? The, the good deeds that I accomplish on this show, the moral clarity that I bring on this show, all right, the sound epistemics that I deliver day in, day out, right? These are my good deeds going on ahead of me and ahead of you going on through the night in the snow to, to light a fire for me up ahead. My good deeds are my ambassadors. The main thing is to deny them my, my essence. So I started talking to an art professor today and she's got to work three jobs, right, to, to pay the bills. And what, what made her all the more alluring is that she loves to read. And then she, she was, you know, pretty young, intelligent woman. And she had this nose ring, like, through her nostrils. And I was, like, simultaneously repelled and yet strangely attracted. I wanted to very gently reach out and, and take that nose ring and then lead her to the path of Torah, to the path of righteousness, to the to the path of modesty. And I wanted to read to her my 99 theses for how to create a good life, right? My rules for life. And then I wanted to share with her my 87 principles for decoding reality. And then if we, if we become really close, I, I might, might share with her my, my diary from my more carefree days where I would just fling myself hither and thither and uh, you know, I didn't mind giving myself a hand. And, and some of the epic insights that, that I, I achieved during these carefree, much younger days before I became the king of, of no fap. And there are not many women that you encounter that one would feel you know, that safe, right? That accepted. Like, I felt like I didn't have to explain to her when I was being sarcastic. I didn't have to explain when I was being ironic. I didn't have to explain to her when I was sarcastically and ironically mansplaining understand do you get how beautiful that is when you start talking to someone and they get you you don't have to explain things you don't have to put things in bright lights you don't have to say oh that was irony or that was sarcasm or that was hyperbole or that was just mild exaggeration uh, i saw this lovely young child in a school uniform. So where I, I come from, Australia, like all the kids have wear school uniforms to school, whether it's public school, private school, same in England. And I wanted to talk to the kid and his, his young mother, but I didn't want to interfere because they, they were wrapped up in, in an intense uh, conversation. She was pulling these different faces and he was just absolutely entranced. And then she dropped something and I, I, went over and I picked it up and I handed it to her and now I had an opening. It was so nice to see a school uniform. And, I, and then she mentioned the school where he went. And I said, oh, I used to date a girl who went to that school. I mean, then I explained, look, she, she went to that school. She graduated from that school. She'd graduated from that school, you know, many years previous to my dating her. And the mother said, so she wasn't still wearing the school uniform? I said, well, only on special occasions.